Death Talk, episode 11. I have everyone back for this episode. Caleb, hello. Hey. Casey, how are hey. you today? I'm good, how are you? Great. Chris. Hey, what's up? And Mark. Hey. Cool. Uh, we're back again. We are here and we're going to talk about a few things and we get some, uh, you know, Death Wish news to talk about and uh, more tour stuff. Um, I'll be uh, discussing Pulp Fiction. I watched it. Caleb's very excited about that. Oh, I can't. He wouldn't tell me. No, the I, podcast. I haven't given anyone my opinion. I actually watched it last weekend. Yeah, yeah last, last weekend. Week. And I've been holding back until now to uh, give everyone my opinion. Oh, Rich, my heads review. Up. This is I like we watched it last night. <laughs> oh, you watched it too? Last night. All right, all right we'll get to it. We'll so get to that fresh. soon. We'll get to that soon. But um, follow up from the last episode. If you didn't know, we got more snow. <laughs> Relentless. <laughs> uh, yes, I think I don't really know. I, I'm. I'm pretty sure we are almost at a record here in Boston or in the Boston area uh, for snow. So um, I live in the the number one snowiest city in the United States right now. Oh, really, Worcester? Is? Yeah, Worcester's number one. They beat out like Syracuse or something. At least right now, there's going to be more snow the rest of the winter. But it's that's crazy. Up. Yeah, fuck your life, dude. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> take me out of this life. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. It's been um, it's been quite difficult because I think we missed a day of work for the past three or four weeks. So we, you know, like it's like one day a week we have to uh, we have to uh, you know get snowed in and we can't get out of our homes. But I think it's going to be better. I think the uh, rest of February is going to be fine. I'm j- I'm just I'm not a weatherman, but I uh, knock I on think wood. You're speculating. <laughs> I'm speculating. Yeah. I think it's, you can feel I, it in your bones. I think it's going to be good. We're going to be okay. But you know what, Mark? I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Can What's you tell that? us about the Death Wish news? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I All think right, that's something. That, I think that's something that I can do. <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah. So <laughs> the uh, the blacklisted new LP, "When People Grow, People Go." We've been talking about it for a bit. Uh, it came out. It's out everywhere now. On Spotify, RDO, through our store, retail stores everywhere. You should go and check it out. It's available on CD, LP, and cassette. Pre-orders for Harm's Way, uh, the Self-Defense Family Creative Adult Split, the Self-Defense Family Touche Amore Split, Eternal Sleep, Steel Nation, all those are all still available now and going strong. There's a bunch of cool variants and stuff. You should check that out. Those are all out on the same day on March 10th. Yeah, uh, and uh, just to just to let let people know too that we begin shipping that on March third. So, but it comes yeah. out on March tenth. So, it's uh, coming up pretty quickly. So, get your pre orders in for those for those records, and uh, we'll begin uh, shipping those out to you. They're all bangers. Yes, talk about uh, Tom Haverford on Parks and Rec, and and save some money. You can order them all together because uh, save some money on shipping. So. Uh, and also, we still have uh, some cursed and burning love pre orders. Uh, still going uh we have some shirts available for both uh releases that are related to the record so cursed and burning love are out march 24th and they're both awesome so you should buy it also another thing to add is that jeremy bohm of touche more has a new radio show through dash radio called secret voice radio it's gonna be every thursday uh six pacific nine eastern you're gonna have to tune in. I, I checked it out. It's a free app. It's gonna be on the indie channel. So every Thursday, six Pacific, nine Eastern, he's gonna be playing music, um, and maybe interviewing people. But I, you should check it out because I'm sure it'll be cool. When he was on Deathcast, it was awesome. So that concludes everything having to do with business. Yeah, that's a great name for a radio show. Secret Voice. It's a good one. I'm gonna. Ch- I'm gonna. I'm gonna listen to it. I can't wait. Me too. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Um, thanks, Mark. Thanks for the news update. Mark's Mark's in the newsroom, the Death Wish newsroom. <laughs> you, you should see all the you should see all the uh, TVs and people walking around behind Dude, him. He's got he's got a whole team. Yeah, a team just doing the news. Dude, people listening are probably like, "How does he just like 
just roll off all those dates, all those releases, just off the top of his head. He has a whole team helping him out. Yeah, he, they're in uh, his ear, feeding him information. And he's not a liar like Brian Williams. <laughs> Brian Williams. Did, did nobody get that joke? No, oh, I got the joke. It's chirp, just a- chirp, chirp. <laughs> Death Wish All Stars. Mark is number one. Dwass. Um, great. So, uh, Chris, uh, the people need to know about the tours. So, uh, let them know what's going on. All right. Where are the band's going? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, Mark, bring us in. Yeah, bring us in. Oh yeah, we need the uh, the uh, theme song. Tour time. Wow, that was <laughs> that's it. That's it. We're out slow. Jeez. Don't worry, I'll I'll auto tune them. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That's an option. Why have you not been auto tuning me the whole time? <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Cult leader starts their uh, tour with Purge, Old Wounds, Hollow Earth on March third through April fourth. A uh, couple tours coming up. Harm's Way's uh, U.S. tour with Code Orange and Eternal Sleep starts on March 13th through the 28th. Self-Defense Families tour with Mac Thaverscan starts on March 4th through April 4th. Uh, for more tour updates and info, please visit deathwishinc.com slash tours. Yo, Mark, take us out. Tour time. Oh, that was nice, great. dude. That was great. Chris, Deathwish All Star, Dwass. <laughs> I don't know if that's what really does that stick. even mean. What does that it, even mean? It's all right. I just told you what it mean. What, what it means? means. Caleb and I have been saying it for a week. It's stuck. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Cool. That's all right. Um, Mark, I heard you got to see Doom Riders this week in your hometown. How did Worcester, you hear Massachusetts. that? You told me. That's how you. That's I, how no, I, I didn't tell anyone. How did you find out about that? <laughs> you told me you're going to the gig. <laughs> Rich, it's not like you sent I haven't a photo seen you all anything. week. Are you following me? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. How was the show? The show was awesome. Uh, there was a bunch of people there. Uh, it was at a really cool venue called Ralph's Diner in Worcester. It's uh, got like an old boxcar diner in the front, and it's uh, got like a venue up top. You can get like burgers and stuff downstairs. Um, it was really cool. Fuck yeah, dinner in the front, party in the back. Am I right? <laughs> All right, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Sounded like a yummy show, dude. <laughs> dude, it was pretty yummy. Slather some ketchup. <laughs> um, hey, speaking of Death Wish All Stars, Doom Riders, how were they? Pretty awesome, right? Doom Riders was fucking awesome. They were great. What'd they it open was, up with? Uh, Darkness Come Alive. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it was great. Um,. So it was cool, and uh, fucking Invincible played. Some other bands played, too. Sorry, wasn't there in time. Um, well, it's but the snowiest city. Of... What? Well, it's the snowiest city in the U.S. right now, so like we can't blame you for being late. Yeah, it's, it's rough. It's like 20 feet of snow on every turn. So, um, But, uh, no, they are really good. There was a lot of people there. Uh, it was like almost sold out, I think. I don't know. There was a lot of people there. And uh, they were slinging their, uh, their trucker hats. It was it was sick. People were just buying trucker hats left and right. Doom doom. What's little known fact? Worcester is also the trucker hat capital of the United States. <laughs> that is true. Little known fact: trucker hats were invented in Worcester. Yes. Along with um, Dijon mustard, <laughs> frisbees. I think. Um, I think we have to, cars. I think we have to fact check that. Yeah, no, those are those are not true. No, no, Mark no, knows. That, this is the fact. But triple decker apartments, yep, they were invented at Worcester. Also, the smiley face, the yellow classic smiley face, Worcester. No, Dude, diner stop cars. It. Uh, Rich, Harvey Ball, look it up. He oh, really? I, I had no clue. Yeah, that's why he didn't. Worcester also invented Mark Connolly. Yeah, oh, you got they it. did. Mark, were you best invention? Do you know if you were conceived in uh, Worcester? Yeah, where were you conceived? Paris. I don't know. I should probably find out. <laughs> That's gonna be our next. There's only. Uh, a, there's only. I, sh- I was gonna say something so fucked up. I'm so glad I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be on the next episode. I don't we're know gonna talk why about... I would ever say that. That's my. That's my parents. Yeah, what we're am all I gonna doing? talk about I'm having where like our an, parents conceived. I'm having like an Wait. internal crisis with myself. Why would I think that this is about my parents? What What are the chances that one of your parents was wearing a trucker hat when you were conceived? <laughs> oh, ninety five point six percent. 
I can't wait for next week's follow up. Because <laughs> my dad is like not the trucker hat kind of guy, but like at the same time he is. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those guys. Cool. I'm I'm glad you had a good time with the show. And actually, um, I was just looking uh, the. Doom Riders sale on iTunes is actually still going on. I thought it was supposed to actually end on Wednesday, but it's it's still going on. So it's uh, if you want to check that out, it's uh, you can get every uh, Doom Riders album for five ninety nine each. Uh, so they're on sale on iTunes. Did you say five ninety nine? <laughs> yes, that five is an that. incredible deal. Yes, on literal iTunes. steal. So uh, it's still going on. It's it was supposed to end. I guess it's running a little bit longer than we expected. So that's cool. Uh, go go grab a copy of uh, the Doom Riders records on iTunes if you haven't uh, had a chance to. But it might not be up by the time you listen to this. But if you do go, if you, if I mean if it still is, go and go and grab it. Um, cool. Uh, we have our next uh, segment of the show lined up here, and actually uh, we have a sponsor for this segment of the show. Um, this this. Stamps.com. Like, you go to stamps.com. No, it's not, not stamps.com. No, I uh Mailchimp? Mail- no, it's not Mailchimp. Kim? No. Mailchimp. Mail- Kim? No. No. This one is this this uh segment of the show is brought to you by Caleb in the Deathwish store. Woo-hoo. Uh Caleb has a, a coupon code offer for all our lovely listeners. I'm just uh, throwing money everywhere. Yeah, he's he's wild. He just says I'm throwing a discount out there. You guys can just uh just, just get ten percent off your next order. So, use the everything. Yeah, use the coupon code, Pulp Fiction, at checkout, and you'll get ten percent off your order. I just, just to be clear, Pulp Fiction, one word, one word, all lowercase. Caleb, you're a Do wild it. man. So that's all. That's for our listeners only. So, uh, yeah. So it's Pulp Fiction. You get ten percent off of the store. Yeah, yeah, everything, and, off, off and you also get fifteen dollars free postage and a free scale. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no! You don't get that. You yep. will get a handwritten letter from Caleb himself. Yeah, and I'm gonna the way I'll sign it. I'm gonna put red lipstick on and I'll kiss it. He's and actually he's, gonna, he, he's actually gonna sketch um, the uh, perimeter of his uh, head on on the back of the paper. Come on, can't fit that on a postcard. <laughs> It's going to be written with highlighter, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Use that code. So, yeah, one word, Pulp Fiction, at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your order. So, Speaking of Pulp Fiction, Rich, is it time? It's time to talk about it. I have oh my, my review. Oh, my God. Where should I start? Just you say your words, and then, like, I have some notes and stuff. Okay. But, like, you go first. Okay. So if you if you didn't listen to the last episode, uh, we uh, discussed uh, d- discussed that I don't watch a lot of movies and I don't know many of the classics or I haven't seen many of the classics. So um, real quick, name your favorites. We already did again. that last episode. Do it again, real quick. Uh, Independence Day is my favorite movie. All right, don't laugh, Casey. Well, at least you didn't say Ted. <laughs> I don't like that. I actually saw that movie too, but I don't like it. Um, uh, Yes, Pulp Fiction. Uh, I watched it, and because uh, Caleb told me I had to watch it. Uh, right off the bat, um, I was watching it on a Saturday night, uh, so Good. I don't know if that can give you oh, any context. <laughs> you are killing me right now. Did you like it or not? All right, here we go. First thing. Let me, let, me, let me read off my notes. The opening scene. The opening <laughs> oh scene of the movie. Oh, my God. I had a real issue with the gentleman's uh, accent. I couldn't really understand what he was saying, to be honest. I actually had to rewind it. Rewind it. Yeah, I had to rewind the VHS <laughs> tape that I that I watched it on. <laughs> no, I had to. I had to go back of uh, a couple of times and actually rewatch the opening scene because I don't know about you, but I couldn't understand a word the guy was saying. Is that fair? Yeah. Could you that's understand ju- it? I think you're on your own with that, Okay, fine. actually. That's fine. But that's... The guy with the cigarette and the accent. Yeah, I know. Tim sitting Roth. in the booth. Um, I do have to say that it, for a movie that was made in... It was in 1994, right? Mm, 90 or in early 90s. Yeah. yeah. It looked, like, really good. Like, it yeah. looks... Like, the colors were, like, really cool. Uh, just the way that it looked, I thought it was 
really like a good looking movie. I don't know if they did like an HD re. I watched it on Netflix, so I don't know if it was like a, you know, a remastered version of it somehow. You know what I mean? But uh, it looked good. I don't know anything about film in recording, but do 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 movies typically look that good from the early nineties? Well, you're probably used to seeing a lot of movies that are shot digitally and Pulp Fiction is shot on film, probably 35 millimeter, which does make a big difference. But your favorite movie is Independence Day, and that was probably shot on film too. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where I'm going. So yes, yeah, all Pulp right, Fiction anyways, looks awesome. It looked really good. I, I, I thought it looked really good. That was a, a uh, critique. Or not a critique, that was my opinion. <laughs> I'm on, sorry, on can part. I just say something? I think it's so funny that you're like, Hey, what'd you think of the movie? And the first thing you say is, the colors were cool. Like, you sound uh, like a baby that's, describing a that's television totally show. Valid, because I, no, 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 no. no I, that's fair. I really want to commend Rich right now. He's giving, like, very detailed criticism, and he's he's getting very specific yeah. with, like, yeah. cinematography. And, yeah. like, and I, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's, that, I'm that's, honestly that's, impressed. That stuff Me adds to your opinion on a movie of course it yeah. does like how well yeah. it, it is shot and how it looks i, I think that's a that's a, yeah. that's, a, that's a big part it's a yeah. visual medium yeah you yeah. picking up on that makes me really excited for you to be exposed to more movies that are like quote unquote good because yeah. i feel like that's like like that's a really cool thing and like when a movie's done well i think attention is paid to the color and all that sort of thing but like if if you're not used to it and it's that exciting, then I'm excited for you to see other movies too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was the whole point of this. So the fact that that's the first so, thing you pointed out, that's awesome. So let me say, I like that. I like that about the movie. I like the way it looked. I liked the colors, and I don't. I'm not a a pro, so I don't know what the you know what they actually did to make it look like that. But I think I like I like the way it looked. Um, I had no idea Christopher Walken and, and Bruce Willis were in the movie. Yep. No awesome. clue. No <laughs> clue that they were going to be in the movie. And uh, and then how much Steve, did you like that watch scene? The watch scene. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was so good. Yeah, good. yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> um, I didn't know Steve Buscemi was in the movie either. No clue. Yeah, quick, quick little cameo. Yeah, yeah. Was he like a big actor at that point? Like, I don't, I don't really Honestly, know. Honestly, I have no idea. Like, was he just like kind of like uh, he? He was in Reservoir Dogs, which oh yeah, I came out, that, actually. which came out before Pulp Fiction. So I'm assuming that was just kind of like a oh, thing where right. Quentin Tarantino's like, oh Steve, Bus Steve Buscemi's awesome. I'm gonna put him in this too. So I like that. Um, it was. I didn't realize the movie was almost. It was like, and it was like three different sections almost. Like there was like different yeah, sections that all ones. intertwined. Mm -hmm. At some point. This is good. This is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, is is that a Tarantino thing? Is that is because I feel like he's done that before. Yes, I I would say that's a Tarantino thing. I mean, a lot of people try to like. So like, I would say. The, sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. Go for it. I was gonna say I was that I feel like Tarantino does. Uh, um, what's the what's the right word to say? It? Not necess Not um. Non non linear. Yes, nonlinear storytelling. Like it's you sort of have to figure it out, and it's not in the right order. Which, yeah. Anyways, continue. Exactly. I thought that this, was I thought that was very cool. And I gotta uh, say, I haven't seen a lot of movies, but Samuel L. Jackson. This is his is movie. Amazing in the movie, and so is John Travolta. So is John Travolta. Yep. But Samuel L. Jackson, like this is like it felt like this was he was like meant to be that role in that movie. Yeah. You've seen these Samuel L. Jackson scene now with the Bible verse. I've always so known Samuel L. Jackson as the guy from Star Wars. Oh no, <laughs> that's tragic. <laughs> <laughs> that's like his like least the worst vital Star Wars movie. <laughs> oh my, Rich, this segment is already a success. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I like forgot he was even in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. He's so bad in Star Wars. <laughs> well, that movie is bad. The, the first yeah, and I didn't realize everyone, that movie was bad. Until, I love like, how everyone later. talks about Samuel Jackson's so famous and a great actor. You're like, yo, I don't get it. He's just the fucking <laughs> doofus in Star yeah, like, Wars. Yeah, I was like, that guy sucked in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so so um, good. So yeah, he was excellent. <laughs> uh, he was great. He was great in that movie in Pulp Fiction. Um, so I, real quick, commenting on like the nonlinear storytelling and like how all the characters all interact with each other at some point. And I just want to let you know, you have. You, I'm assuming you haven't seen any other Tarantino movies. I've seen like Kill Bill, I think. Yeah, Kill okay. Bill. Okay. Well, supposedly, according to Tarantino, all of his movies take place in the same universe. Oh. So, um, which I didn't know that is. Yeah, that's a thing. I don't know if it's true or not, but it seems kind of far fetched because like Django Unchained is. You know, I mean, it's all in the same universe, but it's different time periods. So, I mean, right. you can, yeah, sure, it's in the same universe. You can say whatever you want. But, like, his earlier films, like uh, True, Ram- True Romance, which is, like, he only wrote that. But that, Reservoir Dogs, and this um, have, like, little hints at characters being in movies. Like, um like John Travolta, Vincent Vega, supposedly his brothers in Reservoir Dogs. I forget now exactly, but they mention the Vegas in both movies. So you extrapolate that and then, yeah. Okay, so in in conclusion, Caleb. <laughs> okay. Caleb. In conclusion, um, I like the movie. Should I give it a Good. rating? Should I get, can I can I rate yeah. can I rate the movies? Sure, if you want to. Can I should it be like out of 10? I think it'd be sick if you did a thumbs up or thumbs down. Just a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Yeah, I'm really just interested in whether or not you enjoyed it or not. All right, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. Definitely, definitely you should watch it. Um, here's here's my thing about the movie. Um, and Caleb, you're going to have to help me out with this. I don't know what the actual, like, if someone asks you what's Pulp Fiction about, I wouldn't even know what to tell them. Yeah. Like what's That's the why actual I think it's cool. Like what's the actual story? Well, I mean you could start at the beginning and say What's the point of the movie? What's the point? I don't know. It's just like, like you know a, what I mean? Like there's it's like no... it's supposed to be like a pulpy magazine like like crime story, you know? Like there's like no the beginning. There's underworld. there's really no beginning and end. I yeah. thought I thought the whole movie was going to be based around the um sorry, the uh the guy that's kind of the ringleader of the... Uh, you don't see his face at the beginning. I forget his mm-hmm. name. Uh, sorry. Marsalis. Marsal- yeah, yeah, Marsalis. I thought the whole movie was going to be about him and some... And, and it kind of was. Yeah. But... It's... Yeah, there's no really main character. It's just... Yeah. It's like a... Yeah. You know. So... It's a, it's a universe. It's a different <laughs> type of movie where there's no actual... Like, there's not really a beginning and end. Yeah. There's really but, just a thing that happens. Yeah, I mean, um, that's, cool. that's, I, that's how the non-linear storytelling works. Okay. See, I didn't. Yeah, I'm not. You know, familiar with that. But uh, well, that's awesome. I'm, there's uh, one, quick thing. Did you? What did you think of the music? Because Tarantino is kind of known for his soundtracks. He doesn't use any actual score, so nothing's written for the film. He uses all actual songs. What do you um, think? I thought it was cool. It gave it a cool vibe. Awesome. I thought I liked it. I liked. I liked. I liked the part where they're in like. Uh, Marcellus is uh, living room and they play the music on like the uh, the reel to reel machine like that's cool I thought that was I figured, cool. I figured you might like that yeah yeah I thought that was really cool um, and um, yeah la- last question last question what do you think was in the briefcase oh they don't actually they don't actually say that you're right they, they never say it they never actually show it explicitly what do you think because this is like this is like film nerds. I kind of thought it was gold to the death. I thought gold? it was gold. Yeah, because it like didn't it like shine a little bit when they opened it up. It did. It shine. It shines gold on their face. Yeah, but this is like a. I didn't really, like a honestly thing. didn't even think of that. Yeah, I wasn't like that. Wasn't it's, something it's, I had wondered after the movie. <laughs> it's really probably it's not that important. It's just like film nerds argue yeah. over it. Cause I'm gonna like, say I'm gonna say it was gold. All right, that's. It's probably gold, but people argue that it's Marsalis's soul. You know the band-aid on the back of his neck? Yeah. They like connect that in the briefcase and they're like, "Yeah, it's his soul in the briefcase." Oh, wow. That's some 
That's so I just want, I just want to know what you thought about that. Yeah. Cool. It's a thumbs up. Go watch uh, right. go watch Pulp Fiction. So are you uh um, Pulp Fiction's you ready for... on sale now at the store dot death No, it's not. We don't have it, right? Do we have the D V D? No. Okay. No. Do you maybe but you can it sell is sponsoring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, go watch it. That's uh all right, so now you, you have week? to tell me what I'm gonna have to watch for next week. All right. Or next episode. For next week, you are watching Fargo. Fargo? Thoughts on Fargo. No clue what that is. You don't even know what it is. Is Ben Affleck in that movie? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking of Reindeer Games? <laughs> Have you seen Reindeer Games? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Where he's like he dresses Fargo. up as Santa. I have no I have no idea what Fargo is about. I've heard of the movie. Okay, yeah. Is it a it's, is it a did it win some like uh awards oh, or something like that? Probably, I don't know. Yeah. But it it's like a classic um and it's it's a good winter movie. Okay. I think at once you watch it, you're gonna realize you're gonna oh, that's that's what this is from. I don't wanna give it away, but there's like a big there's a big thing this movie's known for. Alright, I'm gonna watch Fargo. I have a what, question. Have you guys is, seen it? Is the Fargo T V show related to the movie? Yes. It's the same. Because people town say the TV show is wicked good. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. It's really good. Fun Re- fact. You- sorry, what were you gonna say? No, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right. If anyone has seen The Big Lebowski, I, I heard that the reason why uh, Steve Buscemi's character is always told to shut the fuck up is because he has so many talking parts in Fargo. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know I didn't if know that's that. true or not, but it makes sense. I hope it's true. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you guys seen Fargo? Anyone? I, I have. Yeah, I I've love that it. movie. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Chris? Yeah, I've seen it. Cool. It's good. All right. I like it. All right, so yeah, like Mark, show. you should watch it as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to. I haven't I, seen it. Right. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but I'll let you borrow the DVD. I think it is. We'll figure okay, it out. Okay, cool. All right, cool. And, uh, yeah, real quick, Rich, extra credit. Since you like Pulp Fiction, extra credit is Reservoir Dogs. I've seen that. You've seen that? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen Inglorious Bastards? Yeah. Have you seen Jackie Brown? No. All right, maybe check out Jackie Brown. Okay. I don't know if you'll like that, but extra credit if you're feeling, you know. Okay. Cool. All right, we'll do. All right, so it's about that time. It's about that time for Mark to bring us in with that voice of an angel. Come <laughs> ah. Oh yeah. Oh god. Yo, All right, uh, Casey. What's up with the that shit out of that? <laughs> that was the stuff, man. What's All up right, with the cool so. new tunes this week? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the kids about the cool new tunes. So we've got some cool new tunes. We've got the Adventures Supersonic Home LP out on Run for Cover. As many people know, it's members of Code Orange Kids playing music that doesn't sound like Code Orange Kids, but is still really good. Uh, we have the Elder Lore double LP from Armageddon. I think Elder is like a kind of like stoner, doomy metal band. I owned one of their records, thought it was sick. Haven't heard this one yet, but I've been assured by Ben, who runs Armageddon, that it is sick. Uh, we also have the Narrows Retox Split 7-inch in from 3-1-G. And Retox is this new band with Justin Pearson from The Locust and Swing Kids. And Narrows is the Death Wish affiliated, or Death Wish band. Uh, so that's really cool. And then we have the Silver Mountain Zion Orchestra's Fuck Off, Get Free, We Pour Light on Everything LP from Constellation Records. Um, they're also known as like Silver Mountain Zion, A Silver Mountain Zion. It's like Godspeed, You Black Emperor people playing very interesting music. And then we have the Title Fight Hyperview LP, long awaited sequel to Floral Green. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Then we have everybody's favorite band, the Turnstile Nonstop Feeling LP from Reaper, which is super sick. That, take my word for it. And then we have the Xerxes Collision Blonde LP in from No Sleep. And that is all that we have. Well, that's not all that we have. We have quite a bit more. And you can check that out on store.deathwishinc.com. Cool. Thank you, Casey. Thank you for the uh, update. Yeah. Um, 
few questions. Uh, well, uh, we got uh, an, an emailed uh, question and one from Twitter here. Let's see what we got. Um, hardcore. Mu uh, this is from Listener Ray. Listener Ray writes. Uh, hardcore music videos generally seem to have a very similar aesthetic. What are some standouts for you guys? Hardcore music videos. Does any uh, anything kind of stand out as far as that goes? Any, any videos that you've really liked? Like specifically hardcore music videos? Yeah, you know, that's a pretty, you know, I mean, it's pretty open <laughs> sort of uh, thing. Uh I like the music video for Hooba Stanks the reason <laughs> because I did not expect the twist at the end and it really <laughs> it just tricked me the whole time and I don't know has a really high production value I like my glossy music videos to be extra glossy so yeah do you remember when music videos were like so outlandish and like people would just try to one up each other all the time uh, yeah that's way better than like a live <laughs> video for a music like, video you know, like when corn would 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 drive like the expensive cars and like blow them up. Hell what yeah. was that video? Remember I'm, that? <laughs> no, I'm. I mean, I'm sure I've seen it, but I, oh, okay. I don't remember off the top of my head. Hooba oh. stink though. That sticks out. <laughs> hooba 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 hooba. Um, I I, I like. Hardcore. I'm I'm partial to it, but I like the hate breed. Uh, I will be heard video because I was there. That's all. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. I, I think hate breed comes up on every episode. It should, that we do. as they should. That's yeah. good. I also, you know, which one I really liked, and uh, the the video for uh, Touche Amore, like Gravity metaphorically. Oh yeah, that was really cool. Oh, that was yeah. a wicked good video, right? And uh, I about it's so that video. yeah, Max Moore did it, and um, it. I don't know how he did it, but somehow he made the video look like the album art, which was really cool. Do you guys yeah. remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it like, looked like mm -hmm. that building. Yeah, you remember that, right? It like somehow looked like it. I don't, I don't, I don't know how he did it, but uh, it was cool. That's like one of their best songs too. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. That song's awesome. I thought that one was really I good. Actually, I just remembered two music videos that I really liked that I watched recently, but I don't think either of them would be considered hardcore music videos. But I think the a really sick one that really stands the test of time is the music video for first date by blink 182 that one <laughs> i don't even like, know what happened to really that one. sam sam triple b like here. tweeted that it was a sick video and i was just like and i checked it out again and i haven't seen it in so long but it's so good it's the one where like they're playing in a garage and Dude, the wiffle ball like, in the bike spoke the wiffle ball yes. back yeah and the girl's braces screech on the street that's so funny yeah that's such a good music video. That one was cool. And then there was a music video I watched recently for a This Will Destroy You song off their new record. And it was really cool because the art in the record has these really small, like, ornament, like, line drawings. And the music video is, like, really colorful and it kind of animates the line drawings. I don't know. It was really simple, but that was cool to me. I really like Die Ant Word music videos. <laughs> True. Hell yeah. Uh, again, I don't like think Tank these Girl. are... I don't think these are necessarily hardcore music <laughs> yeah, videos, no, but... These are just our favorite video videos. I don't know. All the ones that Alex from Run For Cover and Basement makes are really cool. Like, I, he's made countless of them, but they're all pretty interesting and awesome. That Cloakroom one that just came out? Yeah, the Cloakroom one's cool. The the Super Heaven ones. The, all of them. They're all cool. Cool. No what about the NSYNC video when they're, uh, they're like, pretend to be puppets? Oh, tell, the, <laughs> tell us more about that one, Rich. I, I figured you guys yeah, like that. I'm not familiar. I figured you guys like that one. What do you think about the colors of that one? <laughs> Yo, remember the fucking Will Smith Miami video where he's just yeah, fucking killing good. it in the convertible with the two girls in the back? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I yeah. thought that's what adult life was. <laughs> I'm so let down. Yo, know, adult life is what you make it. I was just hoping just with like... It. I was just hoping just women were just around just going, e bonito, ami, ami, like all the time. And it was like, that hasn't even happened to me once. Mark, uh, I say that to you daily. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I know a music video that Caleb easily will agree with. Oh, the here Grimes we go. Vanessa music video where she like dances and she's like staring into the camera while she's dancing. There's like that one scene and it's like that scene has influenced how I perceive 
people to be attractive <laughs> like from <laughs> there on out because like if anyone can like master that dance and like remain like maintain eye contact move like you've got my heart like that's it it's game is over. that the one where sh she stares at the camera and dances and then it's just her yeah. dancing in like different places is she's in like a stadium at one point uh or i think you're mixing up two music videos oh okay i don't i'm pretty sure the stadium one is for a different song that's not my, on the album like vanessa's the album bef before genesis but, oh, okay my bad yo missy elliott's got cool music videos <laughs> <laughs> like the one she's in a trash bag. Yeah, dude, that's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> Honestly, on, whoa, whoa, whoa! I hear giggles. Revolutionary. Those music videos are crazy. Do you see the episode I, of Cribs that she was on, where she sleeps in a bed that's like a race car? <laughs> no, that's no, so that's sick. sick. I might have, but I forgot. Cribs. On was next sick. week's episode, we'll talk about our favorite Cribs episodes on MTV. All right. Hell Yo, yeah. let's do a Cribs episode of <laughs> Death Wish. Yeah. Oh, yes. One day. One I was day. just thinking about Cribs yesterday because I was like, <laughs> I think I was just, I was rearranging my room and I was like, my room's kind of cool. I wish somebody would do a Cribs thing like for me. <laughs> and like, I, I feel we'll like they it. should bring that back because I'm very interested in what people's rooms look like. I don't know. We'll do it. It's cool. Dude, we should do it. What's in the fridge? Pickles from two years ago. <laughs> All right. Well, uh. That somehow turned into talking about cribs. That's, that was my wait, fault. Wait, uh, Rich, yeah. it sounds like you're ending the segment. I'm not no, we done have one talking more about question. cribs. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have one more question from our, from our friend Greg on Twitter. Uh, Shout out to Greg. He wants to know if we're doing anything special for Record Store Day. Um, we are doing something. Uh, I can't say it yet, but we are doing something. So, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the answer to that question. So Definitely worth answering. Yep. Yeah, that's just, that's that's what we call a uh, tease, guys. We're it teasing. almost it almost seems like it's like planned that he asked that question. I know. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we plan. He's a plant. He's planted on Twitter to ask that question. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we're into? What we're into, guys? Uh, Mark, why don't you talk about what you're into this week? Uh, I got into this podcast called Startup. I told Rich about it last night. I don't know if he checked it out, but it's I subscribed. really. It's really cool. I guess it started in like October of last year, but I just found out about it. So I'm catching up. But uh, pretty much this guy, his name's Alex Bloomberg from This American Life. He used to work for NPR. Quit his job to start a podcast network of narrative journalism podcasts that people think are interesting. And he started his, he's trying to start his own company and he's doing it like documentarian style. And he's like, uh, take he's like recording every step of the way where like the first episode is he's literally like uh, pitching to millionaire venture like investors like venture capitalist people and he's just uh, I don't know it's, just, it's cool you're watching him start a business and as and you're listening to him start a business and figure out how to do all these things and he has no background in business and as it's continuing on you see that it's working like I listened to an episode where he opened up um you can invest in the company like listeners could invest and but he did a disclaimer at the beginning because it was in November and you can't invest anymore but I guess they raised two hundred thousand dollars in like two hours and that guy oh. like what's that guy you like rich Marco Arment Marco Arment yeah yeah he like contacted them after like four episodes about like investing in their company and shit and I guess by like the seventh episode which is where I'm at they have like two million dollars and they have like hired all these people to get more shows so anyways it's really cool it's called startup podcast cool cool uh casey you got something for us yeah uh i've been watching a lot of videos on the vice youtube channel my friend alex actually showed me a video one time of the japan love industry and that kind of got me really interested in the rest of the channel so Recently, I've been watching, like, a lot of their news reports or just, like, exposés on, on different things. And I watched the South Korean love industry one, which was really fascinating. And then the one that probably uh, I liked the most was I watched the entire, like, 10-part series on Chi Rack, which is, like, Chicago's drill music scene right now, which is, like, like really popular hip-hop right now, like Chief Keith. And, like, all those people there. And it was super interesting to, like, learn about that music world 
because I think especially when you're someone involved with music, you kind of assume that you understand every facet of music or, or you just like don't like think about the fact that there's other worlds. And I guess when I watched that documentary, it kind of like reminded me that there's so much different stuff going on and it was really cool. Like one thing that um, on the documentary that uh, stuck out to me the most was the producer Young Chop, who's kind of like the main dude who made all the music for the different drill music artists in Chicago. How he started was like people would message him on MySpace when he was like 15 and he's like 19 now and and makes beats for like Kanye West but he started out by like he didn't have a laptop so he would bring his desktop computer with a monitor a mouse and a keyboard and like carry it outside to like different houses to make beats with people <laughs> and like do stuff like that and I it's just so cool that there is such a dedication to that even if you don't have the means to really uh get the equipment that would necessarily be easiest to do what you want to do but he made it work and now is like insanely wealthy <laughs> and successful so i don't know the, the vice youtube channel is really cool i like the stuff that they cover and the way they cover it are the videos a lot like the hbo series have you seen uh, the hbo I, series i haven't i think i've only watched one hbo thing i think my dad showed me one if I don't know if this is the if it'll remind you of it, but there is one on like uh, I think Newark or, or some like city in New Jersey that's basically like a police state because there's like cameras everywhere and there's uh, constantly police. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was. I know I watched it on a television and it wasn't a smart TV, so I assume that it was the HBO one. Yeah, but yeah. I really like Vice Network. It's I don't know. It's a good news source and. I, the way that they edit everything is really cool and stylish and it makes they cover interesting stuff and they make it more interesting than it even could be I don't know. it's cool very cool uh mark chris caleb anyone uh into i'm oh, sorry mark you already went but <laughs> chris and caleb um i i started uh re-watching spartacus it's on netflix now i watched it before uh it's pretty good you know if you're into game of thrones it's sort of in that vein um so yeah you should check it out <laughs> i don't know i'm pretty boring this week i uh, just been snowed in just watching movies i saw gone girl that was awesome one time i was on a date and i was with someone and i went back to her place and we were going to watch a movie and i spent such a long time picking a movie and, and i think i picked Go gone girl <laughs> and then we and then we just like immediately started kissing after the movie started and i remarked how i thought it was really funny that i spent so much time picking a movie that i thought i would like and it was never going to actually matter did, did so you, that's my well, story did you actually well tmi so you didn't actually get to see gone girl no that's yeah that's i guess the funny thing i probably <laughs> one of the worst movies you could have picked for that time i know <laughs> i've heard it's a good movie i should have just picked like veggie tales or like something that would be kind of fun <laughs> Actually, one time I I like was w with someone while we were watching the Brony documentary. <laughs> so that's a cool thing to have in the background. Dude, uh, I didn't know you were a Brony. That's awesome. Ladies, Yo, if this episode brought to you by Bronies. Bronies.com slash death talk. You have $15 postage and a free scale. <laughs> uh, ladies, uh, if Casey asked you to go back to his apartment, he actually does want to watch the movie. He doesn't, you know, want to do anything else. Just, yeah. just, just don't interrupt the movie watching. <laughs> but I have a girlfriend now, so sorry. Okay. So sorry, world. So yeah, <laughs> you're lost. World. You're lost. <laughs> sorry, bronies. <laughs> One man down. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've uh, anyone seen that show on HBO? Togetherness. Yep. Yeah, I watched the first episode. It's pretty good, right? It's not like anything like crazy, but it's just like an easy show to watch. And I've just never. good. Just good uh show. Uh yeah, it's just about like this married couple that is kinda uh kinda on the rocks and they have these weird things happen to them. And uh yeah, that's about it. <laughs> it's like Yo, half the, an hour show. The the clothespins in the first episode? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Rich, you keep, are you keeping up with girls? Yeah, I watched that. It's it's okay. It's not, nothing special. 
Actually, I thought the last week's episode was actually pretty good. Pissing in the street? Was that it? No. No, that was a while ago. Yeah, that was a oh. little bit. That was a little, I, I'm not I'm, caught up. Yeah. I'm behind, too. I don't know. Yeah, I like a lot of HBO shows. Like They're all, like, good. They're all, like, you know, mo- I mean, most of them are. There's yeah. some that are just, like, I don't even get it. The Foo Fighters one was actually really cool. Regardless, I never if spin- you, like... I- if you like Foo Fighters it. or not, it doesn't even matter. It's just like he goes to different cities and like explores the musical history of all the cities and records in a different studio. It's interesting. Yeah, I watched it, the I one totally I watched in DC. The, the DC yeah. one was really sick because they talk about like um, shit. What, what's the name of that studio? That it's not Jay Robbins' studio. Uh, fucking Inner Ear. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. Also, the Seattle one's really cool. Yeah, when they I go to. Uh, uh oh my god I'm, I'm i'm drawing a blank here guy that recorded nirvana steve albini steve albini yeah steve albini when they yeah, go to steve like, albini he's Bini's in the whole studio. episode it's really cool and they talk about they talk about big black and stuff like that that's cool yeah it's i've it's, been meaning to watch that one i'm yeah. only like five episodes in but i keep forgetting about it but it's it's fucking really cool and then you get to watch a terrible music video at the end of every episode <laughs> yeah it's pretty <laughs> awful all right okay foo fighters aren't that bad they aren't, but those fucking songs yeah, are. Yeah, this new record's <laughs> yeah. real bad. I listened to it once, and I was pretty bummed out. Oh, cool. Well, that's what we're into. Um, I think that's about it, guys. We, uh... Do we Wait, Caleb, anything? there's a new Alien Ant Farm record streaming, and we talked about how you liked it last week, last two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't want to be redundant, you know? I mean, Caleb and I are friends. We have an office that connects through a door, and I've, I've been shutting the door the past week because it's just, like, too much Ant Farm, dude. Oh, my God, Mark. You can lie all you want. We've been having sing-alongs nonstop all Guys, week. Guys, everyone else has a AAA card to get, like, car <laughs> assistance on the side of the road. Caleb's got a AAA Alien Ant Farm fan <laughs> card in his wallet. Dude, president of the fan club. <laughs> president of the fan club. Since middle school. jigga 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 jin jin jigga jin Yeah, there's a jigga jin jin to the Michael Jackson cover. Dude, that's so weird that Michael Jackson covered Alien Ant Farm. I know, right? How crazy is that? That's how good they are. Yeah, the timeline for that just doesn't really work out for me, but like, you know, whatever. I mean, good song's good song. Well, I guess it's about time to end the end the podcast here. Thanks for the outro. Okay. Um... Thanks for Yo, listening. I want to get Def- his haircut. Remember, he had like a buzz cut with a line down the middle. <laughs> what? I Do I that remember shit? that? Of course, I remember that. I rocked that hairstyle for years. <laughs> it's so so. Well, good. thanks for listening to Death Talk episode eleven. Um, you can subscribe to our podcast by searching Death Wish Inc. in your favorite podcast application, or uh, go to iTunes. Uh, you can subscribe there. And if you're there and you like it, leave a rating. Uh, five stars preferably uh if you want to leave a one star uh who should we leave a one star to maybe npr npr leave a one star to npr if you if you don't don't leave it on ours yeah they sold out this american yeah they have plenty of five stars just leave leave a one star with them it'll it will you know help us go up in the in the standings (laughs) there (laughs) um we also have the podcast on youtube just go to youtube.com slash deathwishing and again, if you have a question or you have some feedback, email us, deathtalk at deathwishink, or use the hashtag askdeathtalk, and we'll uh, look through it and answer your question. But thanks for listening. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. <laughs>